Hello, my sister. Introduce yourself to the people. Hi, my name is Vicky. Uh, where, where, what part of the state do you live in? I live in Houston, Texas. Uh, what you do in Houston? I work as a director of postal service. All right. How many times have you been to Africa? About several. Dating back to in the early 70s, I've been to Africa several times. All right. Um, what made you finally... What other places in Africa have you been to? Right, what made you finally come here to Egypt? Uh, I've traveled with Noble three other times. This is my fourth trip with him. And I like, uh, I like the way he handles the tours. I like the fact that he lectures. And uh, you really learn when you're on a trip with him. Right, what is your religion? I'm not a denomination. All right. What is the biggest thing that stood out? The best part I like about the truth was the who's down the line. Well, who's your favorite pharaoh? I don't have one in particular. Alright, who's, right, who's your hero? Uh, I'm my hero. Huh? I am my hero. Alright. What part of the journey did you enjoy the most? Who's down the line. Who's down the line. When are you making your next journey back to Africa? Whenever I can get the next trip here, I'm coming. Get time off from work, I'm coming. All right, uh, I'm not sure. Did I ask you what was the biggest thing that stood out? Yeah. You said you uh, said the cruise also. Yeah, so, the cruise right. yeah. As far as uh, what I meant by that, as far as uh, information, like um, temples, writings on the wall. Just seeing how massive some of the pyramids were. Um, just. To wonder how the ancients were able to build such magnificent structures, and to, to see the lands that we've heard so much about, and have, and to see the truth about the lands that we've heard so much about, and all the information was not true. All right, uh, thank you, my sister. Thank you. Enjoy. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Have a good one. My brother, introduce yourself to the people. What's your name? Oh, my name is uh, Nathaniel Mitchell. Where you, what part of the state you live in? I live in Arkansas. Arkansas. What you do in Arkansas? I'm an electrician. What? How many journey, journeys have you made to Africa? This is my first journey to Africa. Right. What made you finally come here? Well, I wanted to come while I still was healthy and I could still get around and I could still enjoy the continent. All right, uh, how do you feel about the European and Arabian domination of Egypt? I don't think any nation or country should dominate another country. I feel that each country should, should be governed by itself. All right, what is the biggest thing that stood out? I think the biggest thing that stood out were the colossal monuments and, and, and things that we saw here on the uh, continent of Africa. All right. What is your religion? I'm a Baptist. Right. Right. What is the biggest problem with our people? I would say the lack of commitment to each other. Right. Who's your favorite pharaoh? I'd have to say Ramesses the third. Right. You sure you sure you don't mean Ramsey the second? Ramesses the second, yeah. Right. Who's your hero? I don't have a hero. Right. What part of the journey did you enjoy the most? I'd say uh, the float down the Nile. Right. When are you making your next journey back to Africa? I think next year we're going to try to go into Central and West Africa. All right, uh, thank you, my brother. Thank you, Neil. All right, my brother, introduce yourself to the people. Yes, my name is James Ami. It used to be James White. I changed it to James I mean after many years of uh, learning the truth of our identity as a people who had been transported here from Africa and our names have been taken from us along with our religion and our true identity. 
So as you struggle to get back to my identity, I've changed my name to James, I mean from James White. Right, so where you live at and uh, what do you do? I currently live in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, I'm in the IT profession with computers. I uh, also do real estate investment and uh, looking to do just about uh, anything that's going to make me lean at. <laughs> that's not illegal. All right. How many journeys have you made to Africa? This actually was my first journey to Africa, and it was a wonderful one with a, a beautiful group of uh, sisters and brothers, numbering 32. All right. What made you finally come here? Uh, what made me finally go to Africa has always been a dream of mine, and uh, if the dream was finally within my grasp, so I achieved it. And I uh, thank Allah much for blessing me to, to have achieved that dream. And uh, the people that I shared that dream with will always be in my dreams. All right. Uh, how do you feel about the Arabian and the European domination of Egypt? I feel that it is a uh, definite. Uh, it is a it is a definite truth to uh, the question because the question is actually a statement. Is uh, you know stating that uh, Arabia and Europeans are dominating the Egyptian area and which they are and. Um, once going there, you see the uh, influence that they have, and you see that we are the true people, and it's truly our land. What is your religion? My religion is Islam. What is your biggest contribution to the revolution for black power, black unity, and a black nation? Uh, my biggest contribution is my service in the nation of Islam. What is the biggest thing that stood out in Egypt? The biggest thing that stood out to me in Egypt was the uh, beautiful brothers and sisters once we got down into uh, Aswan and uh, meeting the Nubian people. It was just a, uh, it was just mind blowing to me how much they actually look like all of the sisters and brothers back in America, and which uh, sealed the deal for knowing that this is that this is actually where we come from. I uh, so there's no denying our relationship with with our brothers with our Nubian brothers and sisters in Aswan. There is no denying it, no denying it at all. They are a beautiful group of brothers and sisters there. It was actually one of the most peaceful places that we actually uh, visited along the Nile. And it, it, it shows that they have the same heart that we have. They're very loving people. And once we got there, we just felt totally at home and you felt like you were a part of their family, which we are. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to shed blood to get back thing to get things back to the way they were? Uh, yes, I'm definitely willing to uh, shed blood, and I feel that um, the best way to to shed blood is to live your life each and every day, each and every day, according to your beliefs and practicing those beliefs and being, a, and, and being a great example to your brothers and sisters and educating your brothers and sisters on an everyday basis. And that way, you give your life on an everyday basis for what you say you believe in. What is the biggest problem with our people? I feel the biggest problem with our people is trying to be white people. Mm. Mm -hmm. Who is your favorite pharaoh? <laughs> my favorite pharaoh. I would have to, uh, I laugh when I, I think about that because the pharaohs actually worship so many gods and I believe that there's only one god so uh, which is Allah which is Allah and you know so I would have to make that statement based off of uh, just personal character that I, that I saw in the different pharaohs and based off of personal character it would be Ramses because when he did it he Ramses did it the second the great Ramses the second second the great because when, when he did things, he did them big. Right. He did big time. <laughs> we we, we got to get back to d doing that ourselves. And um, who's your hero? Who's my hero? Yeah. Oh, Minister Farrakhan. Minister Farrakhan. I only have one. Yeah, <laughs> that would be Minister Farrakhan. Right. Are you excited about sharing your journey with other people? Oh, I'm. I was very thrilled and. Uh, have the most, utmost honor and respect for the people I shared my journey with, along with Brother O'Neill. Uh, you know, I, I learned a lot from uh, everyone that was on the trip just by watching and observing and and, and seeing it, seeing the trip through their eyes as well as my eyes. 
you know, I got an opportunity to see through the eyes of 30, 31 other people besides my own. What about the people back uh, in the States? Are you ready to share your journey with them, share the information with them? Absolutely. I cannot wait to get back and share in the newfound uh, knowledge and the newfound wisdom that uh, this trip has blessed us with. What part did you enjoy the most on your journey? The part I enjoyed the most on my journey, I would say, would be the brotherhood. You know, the brotherhood of the people that I was traveling with and the brotherhood of the people that we met on our journey as well. How do you feel about the Nile, the cruise on the Nile, the, the cruise down the Nile River? The cruise down the Nile River was, was wonderful. It was quite wonderful. Uh, it's an experience I will never forget. What are our brothers and sisters around the world missing that we saw? Our brothers and sisters are definitely missing uh, value for themselves. They're missing self-value. Uh, the whole time we were there, I felt self-value and I, and I felt the reinforcement of self-value while we were there in that land. But here in America, you don't get the same support for having self-value within yourself because here we're taught to try to be white and not black. So what advice do you have for our people? I would advise everyone to take the trip. I would advise everyone to make that trip to the land where we come from. So when are you making your next journey back to Africa? I would definitely be back on the African continent next year. I brother, appreciate you uh, giving our Revolutionary Cam, which is a Free Your Mind for Mental Safety production, Egypt 2000 tour. Uh, your opinion on your tour. So once again, we thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Peace. O'Neal, hotel, good brother. How hotel. are you today? Uh, could you introduce yourself? Yes, once again, I am O'Neal Brown. I'm the director and star of this documentary, Egypt 2004, live on Revolutionary Cam, which is a free your mind of mental slavery production. I'm originally from Kingston, Jamaica. Right now, I live in, I live outside of Atlanta, Georgia. I'm an aircraft mechanic for Atlantic Southeast Airlines. Okay, good brother. I understand that you just made a trip to the motherland, to Egypt in particular. Uh, how many journeys have you made to Africa? This is my second journey to Africa. My first was in Dakar, Senegal, which was uh, got an incredible history on the sl Atlantic slave trade and colonization and what it does to a country. So what made you come to Africa? I made I come to Africa. It's a long, long time. Um, it, it was just a long, it's one of those things that, you know, if you're black, you have to make a trip to Africa. This so how long have you felt like that? Well, when I was a little kid, you know, you always hear about people saying, well, they're going back home to Africa for repatriation. And, you know, I feel like as time went by and I got a little more money in my pocket now and I developed a little more consciousness, it's a little easier for me to go to Africa now. So, and then just been exposed to a lot of information over the last, last year or so and it made me realize it's time for me to do it. Time for me to stop making an excuse and start being a leader and make this trip to Africa and re learn about the birth of civilization and the greatness of my ancestors. That's beautiful, brother. But tell me, when you, when you went to Africa, to Egypt, and you saw these Arabs crawling all over the, the artifacts of your ancestors, how do you feel about that? It made me sick. It made me want to start going over there and start busting heads. I mean, just to see all the great, all the hard work that my ancestors put in for thousands and thousands of years to, to build pyramids, monuments, temples, uh, do the hieroglyphics, and then for them to, to be claiming it as their own and charging me money, a descendant of ancient Egyptian Africans, 
charging me money and telling me certain places I can't take my camcorder and my camera into. It just made me want to go off and I had to, it took a lot for me to calm myself down because I wanted to start executing devils. So did, did the Arabs over there acknowledge that that was your stuff? Did they welcome you as, as you were making a repatriation or did they treat you like an outsider to, to your own stuff? Them damn devils treated me like an outsider and some of them, they, some of them, they're not, stum they're not stupid, they know, they know, they know the history. One thing about our enemies, our enemies know the history of Africa and they know the, who the birth, who developed, who was, a, who, was a de who developed civilization and who created civilization and all these monuments, temples and pyramids. They understand all of that is that we don't understand it. And that's why it's so easy for them to take advantage of the situation that that they have now, which uh, keep them in control of all our history and claiming it for themselves. So does it kind of give you a different perspective now when you hear the Arabs complaining about Israel over there trying to take their land away from them, Palestine or wherever? Well, you know, man, you reap what you sow. <laughs> so. I mean, that's what, that's what they get. I mean, they took our land, now somebody trying to take their land, so you know. So, uh, did you see any other black people over there? Man, I was just, I was so upset. I saw, it was, I saw over about 200 tour groups, and the only tour group that was black was the tour, our tour group, which was a great group. And I saw another tour group that had one, one sister on there. So, you know, that, that kind of made me sad and made me angry and wonder why our people are quick to go to our enemy's land, which is Europe, and, but they're scared to go to Africa. So who led the tour? Renowned historian, Brother Renoko Rash Dr. Renoko Rashidi. Did he do pretty good? Excellent. My brother is just deep. I mean, that brother traveled over the globe all year round, just to find African presence in different, in different parts of the world. So, what, what's the biggest thing that stood out about your trip? The biggest thing that stood out is obviously the hieroglyphics. I mean, without a doubt, you can tell that these, the image and the drawing on hieroglyphics to tell you that it was done by Africans. I mean, you saw drawings with African, that only African people have. I mean, in things like... Um, you saw, you saw, you saw Isis and Osiris, which now you have, which they used to come up with Mary and Jesus. You saw a woman giving birth in a natural position. I mean, all the features from the hieroglyphics were, they're black people. I mean, there's no denying it. Once you go to Africa and see the hieroglyphics and especially the statues of all the pharaohs, there is no doubt that these are black people. Did you, did you, uh, do you have a favorite pharaoh or one that stood out to you? Definitely Ramsey the second, the great, right here. And the reason for that is because of his dominance. Everything he did, he did big. And he was a great warrior. And a lot of times you had all these Arabian and European devils attacking Egypt. And he would gather up a, a group of army and come up with great strategies and just wipe them out. And you'll see it on the hieroglyphics how he's beating his enemies. So definitely Ramses the second the great. Okay, just to, to change the tempo a little bit. Uh, what is your religion? Well, I grew up as a Christian and over the years um, saw that the Christian religion has done nothing for our people and all it do is distort you from reality and whenever we have injustice in the neighborhood or injustice in the black community all these so-called Christian leaders they, they're, they're no kind of leader because they don't stand up for the injustice for us they do not support us in any, any kind of way they don't teach black history all they do is just all about money and just the confusion of the Bible and all the confusion and the constant contradiction lead me to 
pick up my Bible and throw it in the garbage. And like my man said, burn your Bible and turn off your TV. But um, my religion, I have no religion. I have a religion that's called uh, revolution, which is complete change. Black people getting together, educating themselves on our history, present and our current condition. Getting together, working together to build organizations to take back our land and take control of our lives. So my religion is the new religion called revolution. But is, is there a God in this revolution? Yeah, our ancient African ancestors and our great African leaders like Brother Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, and so on and so on. So these are idols I look up to for leadership and a spiritual connection. So is, is religion, I guess, is it, is it what, is, what is the biggest problem for black people? The biggest black problem for black people, I would say, is um, we're completely miseducated. We go, to this, we go to these European schools and we expect our enemies to teach us our own history and teach us how to better ourselves. And all they're teaching us how to do is to become slaves to them. So if we had, if we had our own people teaching us about um, education and how to build a nation for ourselves and empower ourselves, we will be in a better situation, so I would say definitely uh, miseducation. And the thing of it is, we don't read. We have all these great books that our great scholars go to Africa and dedicate their life to do research for us so we can free our minds from mental slavery and we don't even pick up the book and honor them and read it. So once we start educating ourselves, we can organize, then we can take over. Could you recommend a book since you're talking about reading or? As a matter of fact, um, right here by my coffee table, I have several books, and I guess I'm going to grab one or two books. Destruction of the Black Civilization by Chancellor Williams. Vision for Black Men by Dr. Akbar. Now, now Valley, Contribution to Civilization by Anthony Broder. African Holistic Health. We have uh, one of my personal favorite, The Miseducation of the Negro by Dr. Carter G. Woodson. The Philosophies and Opinion by Marcus Garvey. The Historical Origin of Christianity by Walter Williams and I have so much other books. Um, so did you read all of these books, brother? Yes, I read, as a matter of fact, I read most of those books within the last year. Well, I'm kind of challenged by reading. I mean, I would be scared to pick up a, a book like that. Is I mean, how, how long does it take to read those books? Anywhere from a few days to a few weeks. Depends on how much time you put into it. Wow. So are you excited about sharing your journey with... Oh yeah, I'm definitely ready to share my journey with, especially the, the conscious brothers and the brothers and the conscious brothers and sisters and the brothers and sisters that are open, open to receive this information. As far as the ones that are unconscious and clueless, I'll have to double back and help them another day. But right now, I'm trying to get with the real revolutionaries. So, share my journey. The I did about 10 hours recording in in Egypt, and that's going to be on DVD cut down to about five hours. I got the pictures and I'll be out there sharing information so we can free our minds from mental slavery because I think that's our biggest problem. We're mentally mentally enslaved. So what, what was the general attitude that you had when you were in Africa? Were you mad or angry? I mean, or were you just like relaxed or, I mean, what was the general attitude that you had? In Af when you go to Africa, it brings out all the emotions. You want to laugh, you want to cry, you just want to... It brings out all the emotion. But I was just happy to be home for, another, for one more time. And also, um, I was sad to see that our country has been taken over by our enemies. And to the point where nowadays, we just accept it as this, that's normal and that's the way it is. So that made me sad, and just to be sad that we have more Europeans coming to Africa to learn about our history than we are. 
So that that's like painful, but you know, I'm willing to do do what I have to do to change that because it needs to be changed. Did you have any confrontations with any other Europeans while you were over there? Always, I'm always getting a confrontation with devils because I'm open-minded, and when they come at me, I'm coming back at them ten times as hard. And if it wasn't for one brother pulling me away from this devil, I'd have beat him silly and bust his brains all over the hieroglyphics. So, but you know. These devils, they're definitely rude, and sometimes you have to, you know what I mean? It just takes a lot out of you from chopping their head off and busting them up and spilling their blood all over the place. But they're just so ignorant, and they just think that the world belongs to them, and everybody should bow down to them, and I have a problem with that, because I'm not scared of none of these devils. I'm ready to fight any time. So, this next question might seem kind of silly then, but would you be willing to shed blood to get your land back? I'm ready to shed blood anytime. As a matter of fact, I'm down. I'm I'm down with Nat Turner. I'm down to start. We going around and start executing devils, especially the ones in power. Cause the ones in power, are the ones that are holding us back. It sounds real sensational, brother. Um, but back to the trip. What what part did you enjoy the most? Definitely the cruise down in Nile Valley. I mean, we flew, flew from Cairo to Luxor and cruised from Luxor all the way down to Aswan and stopped in several different cities. And just being on, just cruising down the Nile where my ancient African ancestors were sailing up and down, building civilization for thousands and thousands of years while those devils were in Europe, massacring each other, living in caves and eating each other. And just, it was just an honor to cruise down the Nile. And the biggest thing was going to, ten, going to about 10 different cities in several days. I mean... So, what about the, the Aswan Dam? I mean, isn't that along the Nile somewhere? Yes, the Aswan Dam is... That's like a... That's, that's painful. The Aswan Dam is down... Is in, uh, as a matter of fact, it's in North Nubia, which is the city of Aswan. And that dam flood a big Nubian village and put about over 5,000 years of Nubian history, which is part of the richest African history ever existed under water. The government did, a, did, did save some of the monuments, especially the ones that they're using to get rich off right now. But that wiped out the village after village. And these devils, Arabian devils, talking about, well, we gave the people reparations and built a new village. but you cannot, you know what I mean, their whole history is on the water. And so, you know, I think that, you know, we should get together as black revolutionaries and blow that dam up. And I'm with it, so, you know, whoever, whoever come up with a plan, we can work on a plan. We need to blow that dam up. I mean, because justice needs to be served. So you keep using the term devil. I mean, who, are, who is the devil? Who are you referring to? The white man is the devil. Without a doubt, definitely the devil. I mean, what about white white women and white children? Oh, they're all the devil. Every single last one of them. I mean, it, it's embedded so deep in them that you know, just without a doubt, that you know, all the destruction they've done around the world. I mean, it will take me forever to explain everything, to talk about what they have done. So they have basically done no good. So you know, which makes them the devil. Uh, <laughs> that threw me for a loop there. <laughs> Hello, my beautiful sister. Introduce yourself to the people. Hey, so I'm Natasha Floyd from Norfolk, Virginia. How many journeys have you made to Africa? One that I'm conscious of. What made you finally? What made you finally go to? Uh, Egypt. There's a lot of comedic history that is in Egypt that I felt uh, there was a need to physically be there to uh, see these images uh, for myself to actually appreciate them and learn more about them. So um, they say that the root of civilization started in Kemet uh, for the original people, the black people. So definitely going there and being able to see those images was a necessity. All right. How do you feel about the Arabian and European domination of Egypt? 
I guess in also other parts of Africa, but I guess we can just focus on Egypt. Um, it's definitely a factor that causes a lot of distress within my soul. Um, seeing the Arabs dominate the economics uh, of a country where we originally dominated it is uh, very disturbing. I think that their culture, their language, um, their way of life, has definitely been uh, popularized by Americans because it's it's more appreciated to have a, you know Arabian culture than Kemetic Egyptian culture. So seeing the the variances there is just very disturbing. All right, what are your biggest contributions to the revolution? Hmm, that's a good question. I think just being here and just uh, having the drive to gain as much knowledge as I can about our struggle, who we truly are, where we came from. Um, that would be my number one contribution is just having myself committed to be involved um, in our history and research our history. So at this point, that would be my major contribution is just taking the initiative to go and research further than what I'm told. All right, what is the biggest thing that stood out in Egypt? The biggest thing that stood out, of course, would be um, what all men wonder about, which are the pyramids. Those are one of the seven wonders of the world. Um, to this day, our Caucasian or European friends have not yet discovered how they were constructed. So to be able to stand in front of those and know that, you know, someone that resembled me or reflected me did this, awesome. All right. Are you willing to shed blood to get things back to the way they are, the way they were? Most definitely. Um, with any revolution, there is going to be bloodshed. Um, definitely, you know, follow Patrick Henry, uh, as we've heard the term, give me liberty or give me death. You know, before we uh, decide to remain here and continue to take the police brutality, the injustices uh, with the government political system, definitely there, there will be bloodshed. That, that's automatic. That's a commitment that I would be willing to make at any time to protect myself and my culture. Right. What is the biggest problem with our people? What is the biggest problem? Yeah, what are people? Having knowledge of not knowing who we truly were. That's the problem of, of any people. Um, that's the foundation or the root of the problem. Definitely not being enlightened with our true culture. Where it's not taught to us in, in third or fourth grade and in the history class or the science class. Uh, mom and dad doesn't teach us because they don't know because their mom and dad didn't teach them. So most definitely just uh, being enlightened with your true culture. Right. Who's your favorite pharaoh? Ramesses. Um, what is your Ramses is great what is your religion I don't claim a religion beautiful my culture would be my religion my way of life quote her sure alright are you excited about sharing your journey in in Egypt Africa with our people most definitely um, I've been back now for almost two months and Every day is on my mind. Every day I'm speaking to people about uh, the things I saw and words cannot describe, but I am excited to be able to share some of the images that I can describe with them um, to encourage them to go and see them for themselves. Don't take my word for it, so speaking about it does excite me. What do you think about with the war on terrorism? The war on terrorism. What war on terrorism? The, the, war that, the war that Bush is inflicting the sure. people of the United States of America to attack Iraq, to take over their land and all their natural resources and put a public government in so he can work on this part of world domination in that area. Once again, what war on terrorism? Right. It doesn't exist. Right. Terrorism so is it's a war on that. the Iraqi people most to take control it's, of their it's, com country. It most definitely, it's just a war on, on one man's gain for power, control, and money. So to call it terrorism, that's his term. I don't see a war on terrorism right now. I see a war for a man who's trying to gain wealth to pump into his country. So terrorism is not even an issue, but Bush oh. is. So. Right, so the war on terrorism is not a war. So basically, they're doing the same thing that did to our brothers and sisters in Africa, create a propaganda and take control we of their region and land. the terrorists. I'm 
America is the terrorist. America is the one who's going into many different countries as we speak right now, bombing people, the Sudan, Afghanistan. Uh, you know, we've just viewed the movie Fahrenheit 9-11. So much chaos. Who really are the terrorists? I think we need to redefine that term. So there is no war on terrorism. If anything, there should be a war on us for being the terrorist. So. Well, I can say us because we're not part, we are not Americans, we're a victim of Americanism, so we just are residents of America. So when you mean us, you're talking about the white man who have taken control of the native man land. But anyway, uh, enough all, about that. Not at all, because I'm here right now, so us. Because if I wasn't here, I could not say us, but I'm here, I pay their taxes, I wear their clothes, I look like them, I smell like them, so us. And I'm not proud of that. That's just the genealogy behind slavery. That's what we've been captivated against. So, as you said, with the revolution, there's definitely going to be a change. I look forward to that change in America. And there will be bloodshed, most definitely. But oh. us right. does exist. All right. What did our people miss on the journey? On the journey to Kemet? Yes. What did they miss? Over thousands of years of history. Over thousands years of history. So uh, for a brother who makes up his mind that he has no reason to go to Kemet, he's missing out on something. But for the queen who just doesn't have the finances or the, the resources to get over there, she's not missing anything just yet. But they will, definitely we will get there. Um, I'm definitely trying to look into some issues as far as just being able to sponsor small trips to go. So. We'll get there. Alright, that's in line with the next question. When are you making your trip? When are you, when are you making your next journey back to Africa? Hmm. I can't speak on that, oh. but I know that it'll be soon. How do you feel about uh, the creation of the Aswan High Dam that wiped out over five to ten thousand years of Black Nubian history? That only people benefit benefit from the High Dam which was the white Arab people, and oh. how do you feel about the creation of that dam? Most definitely, it is just that dam. They built the dam. You know, they built the dam that has covered over, I believe, a thousand or three thousand years of history. It is now uh, more than a thousand feet underwater. So to see the Aswan Dam is sad because it just goes to show that the European power is everywhere you go. Everywhere you go, you have this force that you have to fight against. So building ourselves up to make us strong, to be able to go view images like the Aswan Dam and not react emotionally, but strategically, uh, using that mental power that we naturally have, um, is imperative at this point. So seeing that is more motivation for me to build my people up and my, my seeds and take that stuff back over. We can go back over there and reclaim all of that. It is written. That's realistic. All right, my sister, in final... What advice do you have for our black nation of black people? Stay strong, because we're strong people. Most definitely, let's continue to research ourselves, discover who you truly are. Uh, though that's, that lays a foundation right there. You know, let's go back and revisit the images that we once created. Let's recall that memory that has been lost for so many years uh, due to the enslavement of our, our ancestors here in America. So definitely stay strong. Keep fighting. Yes, once again, there will be bloodshed. And protect yourselves, most definitely. All right, my brothers and sisters, you have witnessed this live on Revolutionary Cam, and we promote black power, black unity, and black nationalism by any means necessary. All right, sister, we appreciate your input, and thank you once again. Peace. Our brothers and sisters, once again, your revolutionary brother, O'Neill Brown, is back in effect and ready, ready, ready to start the revolution. Brother Derek, what we got going on here? Okay, before uh, we broke, we were interviewing you on your trip that you just took to the motherland, to Egypt. And uh, I had a few more questions that I needed to ask you. Um, we went off into this tangent talking about the white man and him being the devil and I think you had one more comment to make before yeah, we go. Yeah, I got go. another comment, you know, I'm, I'm going to uh, let the devil speak for himself. 
I got a book here called The Iceman Inheritance by Michael Bradley and I want to share on page share a little some words from uh, the first chapter and this is uh, on page three I will attempt to show that racism itself is a predisposition of but one race of mankind the white race I believe I can show that our converging contemporary crisis like racism itself have their origin in the prehistory of the white race alone. Nuclear war, environmental pollution, resource rape, all are primary threats to our survival and are all the result of peculiar, peculiar Caucasoid behavior. The problem with the world is the white man. If this insight has generally escaped us, it is only because we Caucasoid have dictated much history, written most of it, and judge it in terms of our own self-image. But we have never looked at ourselves in an objective biological mirror. Our racial psychology has brought the world to the brinks of disaster. Now this is the devil himself talking about his own people. So you know, I guess I don't need to say any much more that the white man is not only a devil but the devil and if you don't believe me go pick up the Iceman Inheritance by Michael Bradley I appreciate that brother and I, I definitely will read it um, I wonder do you have any heroes personal heroes of your own? yeah one of my um, top two heroes is is Marcus Garvey and Malcolm X. I mean these are these brothers are some of the strongest speakers. They just could move a nation to the start of revolution in a minute. And some of my other heroes are our scholars who books are written and or seen their some of their lectures. Dr. Clark, Dr. Ben, Sheikh Anthony Diop. Dr. Amos Wilson, Dr. Naeem, Naeem Akbar, Anthony Browder, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, just to name a few, and so much more. And if you don't have some of these books and lectures in your library, you don't know what you're missing. You need to pick it up, and these will definitely free your mind from mental slavery because these are our scholars, and they have, ded they have dedicated their life in the struggle to bring us this information and we should use it to continue the revolution or resurrect the revolution. So what, are, what other advice would you give to our people? Our brothers and sisters, just like I talked about on my, my West Africa documentary in Dakar, Senegal, is we need to get up and make repatri repatriation back to Africa. Africa is beautiful. Our African brothers and sisters who live over there are beautiful and it's a great country. The only downfall is that we don't have we don't we don't control our own destiny in Africa. So once we start making our trips over there and start learning the history of the country and seeing what's the scene, see what goes on what's going on over there and linking our linking our problem to a global problem and not just an individual problem or a problem in America or a problem in the Caribbean but a global problem then we'll see the need for us to um, get back to our roots educate each